It's now the evening of the 30th of April, and I am an extremely relieved and uh, relaxed person now. The conference is over. Uh, this morning we had two concluding sessions. The first concluding session was an internal one to share with everybody the conclusions of the meeting. We had two sets of conclusions. One were outputs that we are going to produce after the conference. This will include the proceedings, and we're also going to do an edited uh, volume, uh, probably a special uh, issue of a journal. Uh, we are talking to a couple of journals where people will contribute uh, papers to. And then we also are, had a, a statement on, of the conference that was aimed both at what we are going to do ourselves as well as what we want the rest of the world to do, particularly leaders who are going to be meeting in the next few months during the rest of this year. Firstly, in Addis Ababa in July at the Finance for Development meeting. Then a few months later in New York in September at the Sustainable Development Goals meeting. And thirdly and finally in December in Paris at the 21st Conference of Parties of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Although these are three different tracks of discussions, there is a common underlying theme to them which this particular conference, the Community-Based Adaptation Conference, that focuses on the most vulnerable and the poorest people on the planet, they are relevant for each of them disaster risk reduction, and I, I didn't even mention the disaster risk reduction one that's already taking place in Sendai in March. That affects poor people. Finance for development is for poor people. Uh, sustainable development goals are largely for poor people, and climate change impacts fall on poor people. So the most vulnerable and poor communities should have a say. Their views should take part in these meetings, and the main message is that the leaders who make these agreements this year should take care to put the interests of the most vulnerable poor communities at the heart of these agreements and we hope that that will take place. The government of Kenya very kindly took it on board, was represented by Fatuma uh, Mohammed Hussain, a senior government official from the Ministry of Environment who promised to take it forward through her government and we hope that other governments and other bodies will also take it forward. So we've had a very successful uh, outcome uh, of CBA 9. I'm very happy. We had 400 people from 90 countries this time. It's the biggest event we've ever done. Uh, and uh, it went off successfully. 150 people went on field visits to different sites, uh, came back safely, which is always a huge uh, uh, anxiety for us. And we had a variety of people from different communities, uh, a lot of exchanges, playing of games, showing of videos and uh, we had a, a, a delightful couple of Maasai warriors with us called Salatun and Stephen uh, who spent the entire time with us and in the end gave me this very lovely Maasai necklace which is meant to bring blessings for whoever wears them. They are both meant for men and women, I'm told, and I'm very proud to wear the one that they've given me.